Hi everyone, welcome to episode 50, 56 of Anni Odinets. Hi friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel Anni Odinets. This is a video journal here on YouTube where I share everything about my knitting adventures, all about my designs. And um, yeah, you're very, very welcome here. If you are new and we haven't met yet, my name is Annina. Uh, I'm a knitter here uh, in Finland, where I live with my family here on the West Coast. And um, yeah, welcome. In today's episode, I have one finished object that has been um, on the needles for quite some time and then i have uh, a one new sock design and um, a few other things to tell you about um, i am wearing actually uh, my tankar sweater this is a pattern that it is very soon to be released uh, i'm planning on releasing this on the 30th of september um, the test knitters, most of them are already done. Uh, there's just a few of them still <laughs> on the go. And um, there has been some very beautiful, beautiful uh, versions of, of this Tankar sweater. So this was originally a t-shirt that I published this summer. And um, I loved it so much that I wanted to make it into a sweater form and my sample sample is knit in Sayewool BFL sock DK <laughs> and um, this is a superwash uh, BFL wool and the colorway is called Brilliant Mr. Fox and I will put this includes paid promotion here because it is uh, the yarn was gifted for this design I love this color. I think it's perfect for autumn. And the only thing that I'm just looking forward anymore is that we would actually get some fall colors and um, I would get some nice pictures outdoors. So I'm looking forward, <laughs> looking forward of the, the fall weather. It has actually been quite warm uh, for September. So I think it, it's everywhere. It It has been surprisingly warm, um, alarmingly warm September. Um, and usually at this time now it's the, th what's the date today? It's the 13th of September. And usually the leaves are already a bit more yellow, but it's, uh, the, the fall is late. <laughs> the autumn is late. So, um, I have, a friend that takes takes pictures takes uh, she is a self-taught uh, photographer she has a camera that she uh, uses very nicely so I asked if she could take some pictures for me um, of this design so let's hope uh, we can do that next week but anyway I can't wait for the autumn for too long because I need to publish this pattern already the special feature about this tankar sweater is the yoke. Um, it's this garter detail here, and there is ribbing on the shoulders. There is this faux seam. Maybe you can see it. It goes down from the goes down from the seam here on the shoulder. So there is a little seam here, and there is some pearl bumps on the ribbing uh, for the sleeves and for the hem as well. I knit the size 5. I can actually, maybe I'll put uh, some details here about the yardages so that if you are interested in making your own tankar sweater, it's two more weeks and then we will have this pattern out so if you if you want to start planning already for your own tankar sweater 
I will put some more details here on the side. But yeah, that's about it. <laughs> it has been too warm to wear it, so it's actually now the first time that I'm actually wearing it. Uh, it took me quite a few weeks to actually block it. Um, I made the sleeves intentionally pretty long, so that if I am indoors and I didn't make the cuffs too tight, so I can then fold up, fold up the cuff and free my wrists for some household chores or whatever I'm making or knitting like this. And then if I want to be very cozy and warm, I can fold them down and be very cozy. Yeah, let's go into my first finished object. But first, let me have a sip of water. Okay. Um, if you have seen my latest episodes, couple of my latest episodes, you probably know that I'm uh, in the process of um, clearing out my old whips. So I've been very, I've been very intentional of of trying to finish some lingering whips um, or UFOs because they have been there for quite some time. And today we have one of those things here. I finished, wait for it, <laughs> I finished my Amidala sweater. And this sweater has been in the works for oof, maybe more than a year, definitely more than a year. Not sure how much more than a year. I think it was somewhere early 2022 when I started this this design. So this is my Amidala sweater. It's a circular yoke pullover that has um, this color work motif here on top and then it's just a very simple simple sweater um the short row shaping is in the collar already and it's been so long that i need to make another sample <laughs> because someone just made the sweater and didn't write a good uh, set of notes so um i need to grade it i didn't grade it when i started mine i just crunched the numbers for my size and um, i think i need to revisit my numbers because it's been a year and i think i've learned quite a bit uh during the last year about uh, grading and designing so I believe I will have to go and um, do all the math again. I'm planning on making a second sample, um, but I'm thinking of making it in size 2. This is size 5, because I have someone who I can gift it to, and I can pursue her, <laughs> persuade her uh, to take some pictures, or to to get some pictures uh, while she's modeling it because um, I don't want another one of these for myself. I don't think I will need another very thick woolly sweater like this. And um, this sample is made with Yalovilla Uhi. It's a Finnish, Finnish wool yarn with, um, it's a mix of Finnish breeds. It is a, it's classified as a DK, but I think it needs up like worsted weight and it's a very thick thick and woolly sweater i said last time that i'm not sure about these cuffs um but i didn't go and make them longer yet because i was running out of yarn i wasn't but i still have one skein but i was just i just left with a little nugget when I finished these, so I was too lazy to wind up another skein. I might do that or I might not do that, but maybe I will take a little video after I film 
film this and add it here on the side uh, so you can see how it looks on. It's a very basic, basic um, sweater, but I think what makes it different is my my color work chart. And yeah, um, I hope that I can manage to write this up in the next month or so, so that I could get it into testing. And it would be nice to release it early next year, so we'll see how it goes. I find I find it sometimes really hard to find the time and I have to say sometimes I'm a bit jealous of people who have all the evenings for themselves and I know that with small children the time is limited and I have a job I'm not working full time I'm working 4 days a week but that <laughs> and then the fact that I have small children and usually when they go to bed I'm then already so tired that there's no real brain activity going on so I try not to be jealous of other people but it's really hard to not compare yourself or your speed or whatnot to other people that you see on the internet and um I sometimes struggle struggle with my mindset that I should just do what I can and not try to overdo things because I have this one day a week that I can work on my designs um, but eight hours is it's not a lot especially when you have a brain like mine and I'm <laughs> unable to focus on one thing at a time I always have multiple ideas going through my head and I just can't bring myself to focus on one thing at a time so that's why my whip chaos is always like it is because it's just my inability to focus on one thing at a time so that's just who I am and I should know by now I'm 35 years old and I should know know myself already that I I can't push myself to work on one single thing at a time and then move on to the next one. So let's say I have a design, I I will go from start to finish and then move on to the next one. It's it's just not how my brain works and sometimes I struggle. Um I know it's not a race, I know it's not a popularity contest, but it's still sometimes hard to see other people doing so much and you're not able to do it all yourself. But yeah, a little bit of a rumble about that. What brings me to one thing that I forgot to mention this um, when we started, that you can find me on Instagram as Knits. And you can also have my uh, my newsletter linked down below. So if you want to join to my mailing list, there will be always some exclusive discounts for my newsletter subscribers. And um, I will be also doing my test calls there. So if you are interested, you can check that out. Uh, it's down in the description box. Okay, one finished object. It's a big one. Uh, I'm really happy that I got it done. And um, yeah, I've been working. I've been like, I just, my tangent about my <laughs> brain that's all over the place. Um, I have been trying to work on the things that I said that I would. And one thing is my husband's socks. And I have one of them finished. I had been working these two at a time. And I worked them two at a time until here, where I was last time. And then I realized that it's just taking me so long. Even though I had two bags with, <laughs> with both white and black yarn in each bag. So that I didn't tangle them too much. 
but I was just struggling to get into the rhythm and I was just constantly twisting and turning and I had all the yarns hanging and it was difficult. So I decided that because it was such a struggle uh, with all the yarns, I'm trying to hide the end here inside of it. Um, I decided that I would just work one at a time. So I placed the other one on, an, on another needle and just worked on one. And I actually finished one of these or this half of the foot in like one night. So it was, it was what I needed. And these socks are It's a request from my husband. He wanted Twin Peaks socks inspired by the Black Lodge. So if you know the, the Black Lodge, it's um, it's a room with, um, with very uh, deep red velvet curtains and black and white floor. And so I've done these. I'm still a little bit afraid that this this part is a bit too tight, but this blocker is European size 44, as is my husband's foot. So I'm hoping that they will fit on him. And then the second sock is here. Wait, now there's that said tangle. <laughs> so where's the spoon is where I was. So I have just... They can't see. So I think I just have like three centimeters and then I can go into the decreases. I make the decreases with stripes because I didn't want black or white, a very uh, noticeable line on there. So I just decreased every second round uh, until here and then every round and just bound off all the stitches and yeah that's what I did and that's what I'm hoping to finish pretty soon we have wedding anniversary in two weeks and I will try to surprise my husband with these socks that have been on the go for a year he doesn't know that I bought the yarn or at least I haven't shown it to him and I'm hoping that this will be this will be um, something that he really likes because he has requested a pair like this or actually he didn't request um, he just said he want Twin Peaks Black Lodge socks and you can decide whatever you um, want so I I did this so they are quite nearly done, so not, I think, one evening if I can just knit them in peace uh, without him being around. So they will be, they will be done. Then I have two um, new cast-ons because, because why not? <laughs> um, actually three, but where's one of them? It's in my bag. I have to get it. Now that we've been doing all this color work, I have another color work project. And I think I thought, talked about this last time. I think I even showed the yarn. I had the idea already a long time ago. So this is one of the newer uh, patterns that are coming out um, in the very near future. This is the Wandering Nomad sock. It's just a sock at the moment. It's a combination of stripes and color work. And I wanted to fade a little bit this, this color work motif. And I think it turned out quite beautifully. Um, these socks are worked from toe up and they have this flegal heel. So there's no picking up stitches, it's just 
gusset increases, heel turn, and then onto the leg. Um, I'm a very tight knitter, as <laughs> some of you might know. Um, I had to go up to three millimeter needle for the color work to maintain the same tension and to maintain the stretchiness that I can actually fit them uh, onto my foot. So I used 2.25 for for the for the foot and then three millimeter for the color work and the gauge is the same. <laughs> I'm pretty pleased and uh, I am calling for testers very soon, maybe within the next two days. So probably when this uh, video goes up, I have already called for testers or if not, I will be doing that very soon. So if you are uh, on my sock knitters test list, I didn't want to send out so many sock test knits uh, for everyone. So I did create another list and you can actually access that list uh, down in the description as, as well, because I am going to ask for another um, I'm going to call for testers for another sock, uh, which is coming after this. But this comes first because I really found an inspiration. I did manage to make this in one day, I think. Um, it, was, it wasn't last weekend, but the weekend before that. So two weeks ago, I just bashed it out in one day. I had a very strong vision and I already had all the yarn waiting for waiting for me and um, yeah I have to say I'm very happy about this this is I think this screams me this screams um, what I started with which was color work socks and um, I think I think it's pretty cool <laughs> what do you think <laughs> so yeah that's that that was one new cast on and then I have this other yarn. My mom has given me this yarn um, some time ago. And this is a very um, odd sock yarn because this is a polyacryl and polyester yarn. It's meant for socks. It's actually called sensitive socks. But I thought that it's such a weird combination of or composition of yarn that I don't want to make it into socks. But I decided to make uh, wrist warmers for myself because it's now the time of the year when you don't quite need gloves, but these fingerless mitts are perfect for, for the chilly mornings. And uh, I thought that this, it's actually very soft yarn. Um, I don't know if it's very warm, so I, I think it's just what you need for, for this time of the year. And actually it was a hundred gram skein. So I'm planning on making two pairs out of this one ball. My, my husband is running most mornings, so he, he gets up very very early like 5 15 and <laughs> goes for a run so um this is something that he also needs and i think because it's it's completely um a synthetic fiber i will be able to wash and whatnot so if he sweats <laughs> onto them then uh, it's easier to just uh, wash with regular laundry so I did just manage to cast on stitches for the second one. I have kept this in my handbag and if I have a minute, I will be working on these. And um, I'm not using any pattern. I just cast on 50, 60, no, 58 stitches, no, 56, 56 stitches. And I'm just working in stockinette. I just measured that approximately like eight centimeters and then i started gusset increases and um, i made like 30 rounds for the cuff the 
gussets and 30, 30 rounds for for the hand as well and my husband's hands are relatively narrow he has very long long fingers but um he tried my glove on and he said that it feels fine so i think i will just make him the exact same pair and uh maybe i will <laughs> use another another color to bind off or for the thumb or whatnot so that we can tell our pairs apart and uh, he doesn't steal mine or <laughs> I don't accidentally take his. And that's uh, one of the newer cast on that I have. And then I have one more thing that I'd like to show you. And this was a very impromptu <laughs> cast on as most of my things are. Um, Before I show that, I did bring one other thing here. I will show it to you one last time before it goes to the frogging pile. No, actually I already took the needles out because um, this was the beginnings of what's the pattern called? Wild Poppy Pullover by Tiff Nealon. And I just can't with this yarn. This yarn is giving me a headache. <laughs> it's a, uh, it's the zebra yarn. This is now the third time that I am using this. Wait a second, I need to. My phone is blinking battery. So where was I? Yes, this zebra yarn. In theory, it's very beautiful, but in real life, I just don't know how I feel about these tiger, tiger stripes. It's very blotchy. It's not very even with the coloring. There is now this very dark gray with it because, uh, in this wild poppy pullover, there is this simple color work, one by one color work with uh, a contrast yarn. I just think it looks like a mess. And um, once I made the yoke, it's the perfect size for me. It doesn't, the, the fit is great. There's no problem with that fit, but I don't think, no, I know that I wouldn't wear it. And, um, I then asked my brother's girlfriend or fiance or not fiance but um spouse <laughs> um they are living together and uh she she said that she would like this but she is much 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 smaller than I am and I asked for some measurements of her sweater that she likes to wear I was thinking if I wouldn't do the all of the increases that it could work but it doesn't work. It doesn't work for a smaller size, so it's just better to rip it out <laughs> all together. And uh, I don't know what to do with that yarn because that's already the third time that I am using it and it's just giving me a headache. This was the third yoke that I have started with this yarn and all of the ones have been frogged. I don't know if I can do it another one more time. Like fourth, it's the fourth time the charm. <laughs> I don't know. So I don't know. Any suggestions? What should I do? Should I just sell this yarn away or gift it to someone or hold it together with something? I have that harvest yellow. This British wool cone that actually is very similar in color. Would it blend all the black? Not all it, all of it, but would it make it more even? Maybe I could make a lento out of them. I don't think I want anything for myself with this yarn because it's just 
every time I look at it, it just gives me <laughs> gives me the bad feeling. Um, I've been working on it so many times, and it's just not coming together. So, yeah, that's that's my plan. That's what I'm planning on doing with this this one. So it was the last time you will see that said pullover. Now on to my last my last working progress, and this is an exciting one. Um, like I said uh, earlier, that I have so many ideas, and I feel like I don't have enough time. I think that's a common common problem with everyone because we would need all the hours in a day and no other um, responsibilities. That would be great, right? <laughs> um, I am teaching these knitting classes at my local, um, what is it called? It's a community college. And I have two different classes and they, they are both held at my uh, local it's not a yarn store, but this craft center. And um, my this fall, these classes now started two weeks ago. So I have held one class for one group and one for the other group. And um, I needed something to cast on because the first time that we come together, we always, because there's always new people with with the ones that are continuing so we are usually going through the twisted norwegian no old norwegian cast on or the twisted german cast on so a stretchy cast on method uh just to tickle the uh, pickle a bit so i needed something to cast on and i was the the night before I was like, what to take, what yarn to pick. I just don't want to cast anything on just to show the cast on because I just then want to use it if you cast on, let's say, 100 stitches. And um, I decided to cast on the single mold sweater for my husband. And here it is. I have now done the yoke. I did place the slip stitches already on onto some cables because I need to I need to try this on before I continue any further. Um, I had already swatched this yarn a year ago. I have bought this yarn in February 2022. No. Yes. Yeah, I think it was February last year. And um, I didn't swatch in the round. <laughs> I know, I know, I know, I know. That's very bad of me, but I did that. And then I just took the needles that I had written in the in the swatch. And um, I am getting a tighter gauge that I should. So I picked the size four, I think, three, four. I think I picked a size four for him and um, yeah, my tenter is, is it's tighter. So I had to go down to the se next, um, down to the next size or up to the next size, however you want to see that. And um, I was just measuring this against his commercial sweater that he likes and the fit is great. So. It should be fine, but I don't want to put it in the round or <laughs> work it in the round before he tries it on because I just don't want to rip back. So he needs to try this on. I think the color is fantastic. It is uh, Villa Vantut Finnish wool. I don't have a label here, but it's a very rustic. It's sort of rustic, but it's still very soft. If you know Finnship wool, Finship wool is actually very soft, even though it's it's uh, not merino soft, but it's rustic soft, and it's not prickly at all. 
so i think it will be a very nice sweater and it's much airier than um so it's thinner yarn what the pattern re recommends but i did get this i did get gauge uh originally but now i'm off off gauge off gauge <laughs> just <laughs> needing size up to to um get the right size um but i do enjoy working on it it's very mindless and now that i'm getting into to knitting in the round it's even more simple the texture is very lovely and the details of the raglan that goes into the into the collar is also very nice but i know that my husband um he's very like he has very round shoulders or hunched like his posture is um you know he sits on the computer all day long so his his shoulders are a bit more forward so even with regular t-shirts he usually has has the problem that they are like coming up to his throat which is not nice so even though i made the short rows on the back so the color is much higher on the back than in the front I will be doing some additional short rows um, and I'm raising the back now that I have split for for the sleeves I will do some short rows under the arms so that I can get more length onto his back because he really needs that so that's uh, something that I will plan or I am planning on changing because as it is it's not going to be comfortable with uh, the rising neckline but yeah, um, <laughs> when I started this last week, I was like, hmm, could I finish this in three weeks to <laughs> gift to him for our wedding anniversary? Because I have I have actually made um, two sweaters for him before, and both of them were uh, gifted to him on our anniversary. So last year and the year before that, I have gifted him a hand-knit sweater. So this year... Probably not, <laughs> but <laughs> I have started and I'm really enjoying that. So that's at least fun. But I think this was everything that I had planned for today. I still have some work to do. I wrote up already the Wandering Nomad pattern, but I have I have some other other pattern writing tasks to do. So. I won't be <laughs> continuing any longer for today and I will be coming back in two weeks time when the Tankar sweater is going to be released. So stay tuned and I will see you next time. Happy knitting. Bye.